Joining me now is Mike McGlone, Senior Commodity Strategist at Bloomberg Intelligence. Good to see you again. Good to see you. It's been a whole year. I know. Can you imagine? Here we are. So let's let's move it forward. Last year, we were talking about the possibility of the U.S. recession. Uh, Bloomberg's Commodity Spot Index was at a multi-year low. Now, things are much different. Obviously, the U.S. appears to have skirted a recession. We've got record highs for copper, for example, up about 30% in the last uh, several months. So What's your, your overall view? Let, let's keep gold out of it for now, but the overall view of the commodity complex. So we've, we've um, had our soft landing. The question is, the way I look at it is the pendulum swung way too far to the recession last year. I was wrong. I was with that consensus. And now I think it's the pendulum swung way too far this year to no recession. I think it's swinging back a little bit. So overall for broad commodities, very peakish. You have to expect a few things for commodities to happen. First of all, they're just kind of catching up to beta on a broad commodity basis. The, mo the most significant commodities that are really doing well are the metals, all metals, led by gold, so we don't have to go there, but industrial metals catching up, but they look a little more transient. And then there's key things that stock market in the U.S. is at all-time record highs. And it looks like commodities are just catching up. But I published a few, about a month ago, point out the Bloomberg Commodity Index is about a quarter century low versus the stock market. I'd use S&P 500. So I think what we're seeing is we're seeing that allocation. A lot of it's going to metals. There's rumors that China's, hoarding some of the silver and copper metals, which makes sense on back of the week. No, they're buying gold. Um, but then you look at the other commodities that really matter, like crude oil, it's down and should continue lower. Crude oil is highly elastic and it's indica indicative of supply and demand excesses going lower. Grains are still down, highly elastic. And unless we get a normal, you know, unless we get a drought in the corn belt this year, grains will probably head lower. So overall, good commodities, I think they're very dicey here and I think they're quite risky. But they're well, they were so low versus the stock market. Stock market record highs are just catching up. Right, okay. Uh, so a year ago, you thought gold was on the verge of, of a significant breakout. You were right there. We're at an all-time high. We know there are always multiple factors driving gold, but how much of it has to do with people waking up to the fact that, hey, the U.S. has a debt burden of $34 trillion rising? Is that is that the big reason, do you think? No, that's part of it. You know, the number one reason gold's going up so far is China central banks are buying the deepest markets okay. on the planet, according to the World Gold Council, but the price justifies that. At the same time, investors are selling. ETF outflows have been significant. So the way I see gold, it's a matter of time it's going to 3000 I said that years ago. I've been wrong, but that's what gold does. It has to make it difficult. It kept bumping up against $2,000 resistance. Now it's breaking through 2,400 or so. So I think it's a matter of time it gets there. 2,200 is good support. And the key thing about gold is it's beating stocks. When the rock beats stocks, that's a problem. So S&P 500 on the year is up about 12%. As of today, the May 21st, gold's up about 17%. That's not good. I think part of it is a de un unstoppable deficits, unlimited. There's also a, a consensus in the U.S. to bash China with, as we head towards this election, which is bad for China and what's China doing buying gold. The bottom line for gold is I think at some point, this mantra I point out is, hey, why would I buy gold with a stock market and tear and key bills at 5%? That's showing up in ETF outflows, but at some point, I think they're just starting to turn towards inflows. And for that to really be a flood shifting back upward for gold ETF inflows, you need a little reversion in the stock market interest rates. And here's the problem, but there's no reason for the Federal Reserve to cut rates until the stock market goes down. The stock market right now in the U.S. at total market cap of $55 trillion is two times GDP. That's the most since 1930. So in the 30s, I should mid 30s. So it's all that matters. And so stock market go, going up, sticky inflation, Fed stays tight. Stock market goes down, inflation goes down, Fed eases. To me, that's what gold's picking up. You mentioned those gold ETF flows. Um, do, do you think generalist money is coming in just yet, or is it still sort of early Not days? We, wait. we don't see gold on the front of Time Magazine to use a dated reference, you know what I mean? So I was impressed. I went to the money show in Miami a little while ago. A lot of people talking about gold. I was surprised by that because the outflow shows there's absolutely no interest in Western investors. 30 million ounces, that's almost 25% down total ETF holdings, 110 to 80 or so based on Bloomberg data. At the same time, we've had the gold price go up. In the 20 years of ETF trading, that's never happened. So something's going on. Someone's buying that gold, central banks, China. And for that, at some point, it, it's down so much, to me, that's the next big catalyst. And people realize, okay, the rock is beating stocks, is potentially it's going to do it. And here's a key thing I like to end with is you look at the U.S. stock market versus GDP. It's the highest since the 1930s. So it's really expensive. You look at the stock market versus gold, it's very expensive. You put those two together in 100 years of data, both of those, 
stock S&P 500 versus GDP, S&P 500 versus gold, both of them have never been that expensive but versus both those measures together. So I look at it as, all right, well, gold's cheap. So do you see gold continuing to chuck higher? Is there a possibility of a, of a violent breakout at some time, at some point? It's hard to forecast, obviously. But, well, yeah, as, yeah. I think, as an ex-trader, I used to have hair. I try to avoid that. So I fully expect at some point we should get a 10% correction. Normal bull markets do that. That's the problem with the stock S&P 500. We haven't had a 10% correction since the bottom last year. Mm -hmm. Typically, when that happens, that means it's getting excessive. So I don't know how and, and when it does. But that's the lesson you learn as a strategist, never put time and price together. It's just a matter of time. And then there's this the fact that gold is, you know, there's only, it's the most inelastic supply commodity versus the elastic supply commodities, crude oil and corn are suffering. Why? Because price went up too much in 2022. Gold is just catching up, I think. And I don't know what stops it, but it's, it's historically, over time, gold beats all commodities, particularly copper, silver, crude oil. And particularly since the financial crisis. So those are enduring trends. And I look at it as a strategist. What does it take to accelerate that trend, stop it, or reverse it? And to me, all the forces are more towards acceleration, gold beating all commodities. So right now we're seeing a little dip in the gold of copper and gold of silver and gold of crude oil. Well, gold crude oil isn't breaking out. I mean, crude oil. And, but I think it's all going to catch up. And the premise, the bottom line, is just a little mean reversion in the stock market. And you look at volatility of the stock market. VIX is really low. And the key indication I look at globally is the global interest rate curve. Bond yields in China at 2.3% versus the U.S. at 4.4%. Those are 10-year yields. It's a se severe sign of deflationary recessionary forces out of China. You've got a $3,000 target. The guy who just left the room, Rob McEwen, for years has had a $5,000 target. So you're not that aggressive, but uh, we'll see where it goes from here. And always great to catch up. All right, stop. Good catching up next time. Okay, great information from uh, Mike McGlone. Bloomberg Intelligence.